Uh, man, it's getting kind of crazy out there. I went to get one of my cars washed and half the staff wasn't there. I went to a restaurant which was packed and there was like a two hour wait. And they were like, shortage of staff, shortage of staff, shortage of staff. Now, in this weird economy, where we have high unemployment, where we have probably eight to 10 million people not paying their mortgages, where we have numbers people are starting to get evicted because they're lifting the eviction memorial, where we have a lot of people who are behind on their car payments, behind on their credit card payments, and we got folks who don't want to go to work. I mean, I understand if you have a sucky job, I understand that. But there, there comes a time where you got to be an adult and you got to do the things you need to do to have the life that you want. And right now in this weird socialist economy, and I talked about this in my live streams last year, I said that this government money was going to create a problem for businesses. And here we are. I mean, people, because I'm from a different generation where if someone gave you a job, you showed up at that job and you worked as hard as you could. We don't have that kind of work ethic in society overall anymore. We still have it in people my age. Um, this is one of the reasons when I start hiring people, I'm probably going to hire older. Um, but every young buck is like, I hate this job. I want to start my own business. And you have all of these YouTubers, all of these TikTokers, all of these people on Instagram are saying, look, you don't have to work hard. You don't have to work hard. Just sign up for my program. And within four to six weeks, you can quit your job and have more freedom and make more money. This is the sales pitch. And people are buying it with the big spoon. They're eating it up with the big spoon because folks are lazy. And I had someone on um, Clubhouse wanted to challenge me when I said that folks were lazy. You don't have enough money to pay your bills. You got a job, but because you got a little government money, you ain't going to work. What is that? What is that? That's not non-lazy. What is that? And this year is going to be very, very strange. None of the marketplace's forces are going to come into effect. Also, crime is at an all time high. PPP, EIDL loan fraud is, we're talking like, they estimate the loan fraud to be at 80 billion. We have a certain segment of society that just doesn't want to do right. They don't want to go to work. They don't want to earn money. They, they, they just want to cheat the system or commit crime. Commit crime. Crime is off of the charts right now. Now, there, there's something else. In my neighborhood, uh, there's a section that kind of bordered upon the city of Atlanta boundaries. And they used to have cops there. Actually, this is where I ran into the cop who found out my license was suspended. Didn't arrest me, didn't impound my car, let me go and went to court and worked it out. I've not seen a cop in that area in ages. And you know what I found out? The city of Atlanta is short 1,000 police officers. They have a deficit of 1,000 police officers. And on that, in the current climate, the political climate, I wouldn't want to be a cop either. 
I can understand that because right now you could do something in the duty of you being a cop and end up being going to jail for abusing some citizens rights. So I, you know, I, at one point I was going to be a cop. I was going to join the Atlanta police force. And at the time I was married and my ex-wife threw a fit. She said, you're not going to be a cop. It ain't, it ain't happening. So we're starting to see uh, also we have a dearth in the lack of plumbers. We have a dearth in the lack of uh, carpenters. We have a, a dearth in the lack of electricians. See, all this started with the no, left, no Child Left Behind Act where everybody's going to college. And here's something that's funny that happens to you when you go to college. When you go to college, whether you get your degree or not, you don't want to work a regular job. I mean, the most you will do is become a server or a bartender, but you don't want to be a plumber. You don't want to be an electrician. You don't want to do any of that dirty work. You know, electricians are making like a hundred bucks an hour. Plumbers, a hundred bucks an hour. Carpenters, not so much. I think 35 to 50 bucks an hour, but essentially, any job that requires you to work with your hands, people don't want to do. They want to have some type of intellectual um, headspace type job. And we got a lot of people, we got a lot of openings for plumbers, electricians, carpenters, construction workers, truck drivers, and we are creating a society of people who don't want to do that kind of work. And here's the thing that's funny. These people don't want to do that work to the point if they are broke, they are broke, they still ain't going to do it. They're still not going to do it. Even if they're broke right now, the, I read this article, more adult children have moved back home with their parents than ever before. And now that they're back home, they don't want to leave. I want you to think about this. This is why I say we're heading to a very socialist nation. All right. So you are an adult living with your mama and your daddy or living with big mama and grandpa you are up in their house as a, an adult because of the cheap or in many cases you're not paying rent you're not paying rent so we have a society of people who are being supported where they don't have to go out and get a job. Like I was dating this chick and I got rid of her after this. Um, she got like $7,000 and then she took a, a month long break from her job, took several trips, caught her car payments up and I, I saw this financial behavior and I was completely turned off and she's hot. She's cute. She's very, she's beautiful. But from a financial standpoint, her life is a dumpster fire. And I found out that she had all this debt. She was not one, not two, but three months behind on her car payment. Remember my video? The repo man got canceled. So right now we have an artificially supported economy. The Fed is supporting the stock market. Um, people are not being foreclosed on. People are not getting their cars repossessed. And in some jurisdictions, I don't know all the jurisdictions, people are not getting evicted. So we have a nation. 
and I'm gonna put it at 30, maybe 50 million people, which is a significant part of our society of 330 million people. Let's say 50 million people are living like this. They ain't paying no bills. They living with Big Mama. They ain't working. They went to college so they don't feel they don't have to do certain kind of jobs. We have a nation that is de-evolving into a socialist, um, like I said, the socialist segment, because I, I can't say we're, we're devolving into a socialist empire. We're not there yet. But 50 million people is like 20% of our society. That is significant. That is a significant demographic. And we're going to see this weirdness rest of the year. Maybe even into 2022. We're going to see this weirdness because right now, if you're trying to buy a house that's under 400K, you're in a dogfight. There's no one giving any concessions. You're not going to find any deals. And if the, let's say the 10 million people who were not paying their mortgage, if they were starting to foreclose, housing prices would be down. So because we have these people who are living in this artificial bubble, you don't have to pay your mortgage. You don't have to pay your rent. You don't have to pay your car note. You don't have to pay your credit cards. And the government going to send you a check. You can get by because you ain't paying no bills. You can get by. A lot of people are getting by in this artificial bubble to the point that if they have the option to work and they don't feel like it, they don't have to go to work. I'm telling you, for my corporate citizens, this is going to create two societies. We're going to have the societies of hardworking, productive people, and we're going to have the society of these folks who don't want to work. Like I said, this chick on Clubhouse challenged me. Uh, chick, I really wish we could have got into it a little bit more because right now we're seeing the lazy segment of America. They don't want to work and they don't want to do jobs that they feel is beneath them. They don't want to do these jobs. Like, um, it, it, it's amazing what is happening because normally, you know when service starts to suck, service starts to suck in a good economy, right? Because people have options. Right now, service is starting to suck because people are getting government money. I mean, you got folks who don't want to do Uber. They don't want to do Lyft. They don't want to do DoorDash. They don't want to do none of this stuff because they're living in this artificially, artificially supported, protected bubble. And this isn't overall good for society. It isn't. And then you got these YouTubers, these TikTokers, the Instagram people, these folks on Facebook who are feeding the fire. They're, they're fanning the fire like, hey, you don't have to work hard. I actually saw a YouTube video that's like, you don't have to work hard. And this whole mantra of not working hard and working smart is being prostituted to the masses because right now you got people out there who feel that they could put 500 bucks in the crypto and turn that to 100k you got people who feel that they can get on one of these internet scams and make a lot of money and not work hard and have all this free time to hang out with sexy slim susan big booty betty and just be living that life. 
And for my hustlers, the opportunities are going to be massive. For the people who want to build businesses, for people who want to conduct themselves like adults, because we're going to have 20% of the country that's not participating. They, they're not going to be participating. And then we're going to have another group of the segment of the economy. They don't even know how to get started. So we're going to essentially have half of the country not participating in the great wealth transfer. Half of the country not participate. I mean, essentially, you know who's going to get the money in the great wealth transfer? Wait, the great wealth transfer, the global reset, the top 10%. Look at me. I got money. I'm still out here hustling. I want you to think about this. I have had numerous comments on this YouTube channel. If I was making that kind of money, I would not be doing YouTube videos. If I was doing this, I wouldn't be doing this. And this is something to the uninitiated, to the functionally illiterate and the functionally financially stupid the reason i make this money is because of youtube channels and they don't even get that because they don't even know how to make money they don't know how to create value they don't know how to build nothing but in their minds they're geniuses in their minds they are super smart because hey i'm buying some altcoins i had a guy on this channel who could not start a lawn service, which is one of the simplest businesses to start. Couldn't do it. But because he bought some crypto, he feels like he is a financial genius. And it is kind of funny. Uh, there's an Asian chick who changed her YouTube channel from business to crypto. It was Jade Millionaire, now she's Jade Crypto. And this is a phase. When I was a kid, there was something called the pet rock. People, they used to advertise this on television. People were paying like $29.99, I believe, for a rock. Stupid thing has been, stupid stuff has happened in our society forever. And this was a phase where the pet rock was selling. People were sending money in to buy a rock, something that they could open up the door to their house and go outside and pick up a rock. And they were spending money for a rock. This went on for a while. I remember the commercials. So this whole crypto thing is going to go on for a while. And at some point, it's going to lose favor because it's going to run into some problems. I predict that there's going to be government intervention. I predict that it's going to be real interesting. And all of these people who have spent all of their time learning about cryptocurrency versus building real businesses are going to be sorry. Going to be sorry because essentially you need to develop cash flow. You don't need to be investing. If you're in danger zone, number one, you don't need to be investing. You don't need to be doing crypto. You need to start you a small business, start serving people and start making you more money. That's what you need to be doing. If you're in that income zone, number three, 150, 200 K a year, do what you want. Knock yourself out. You can do financially stupid things and You'd be good. You would be good. You could finance cars. You could smoke crack. You can do whatever you want to do, and you still would be good because you're making so much money. But if you're in danger zone number one, danger zone number two, you need to start a small business. That's what you need to do. And so many people don't want to do this because like we got 20% of the country is in 
it's on artificial support due to family, due to the fact that they're not foreclosing on houses, they're not repossessing cars, they're not coming after you, the credit card companies, they're not sending your accounts to collection. At some point, real marketplace activities are gonna start happening again. And when that happens, a lot of people are gonna get caught short. A lot of people are gonna be in a world of hurt. You're going to see it. Because here's the thing, and this is one of the reasons that I keep talking about crypto. You wanna go ahead and get all up in the crypto world and buy crypto coins and stuff, and then when the government bans this and you spent two, three years learning how to buy crypto and you've not built any real skills, not one real skill, you don't know how to market, you don't know how to sell, you don't know how to write a business plan, you don't know how to, you, nothing. And then you're gonna be looking like Boo Boo the Fool because you, just like people who bought the pet rock, like right now, Dodge coin. It's a joke. It was created as a joke and people are spending money going back to the pet rock. Going back to the pet rock. We have seen this financial foolishness before and we'll see it again. We will see this again. You've got people out there who are doing this dumb stuff and think that they're smart because like for the last 10 years, we've had a bull market in the stock market. And um, a guy was talking about why people with money finance cars. And he was saying like, you know, maybe he should have taken the money and threw it in the market, right? Here's the thing with that. People are watching this YouTube channel and they're getting this advice and they're not in a position to act upon the advice. See, that, that, that's my big issue with this. Only a small segment of, econ of the economy, once again, the people making 150, 200K, they can play these financial games. 90% of America can't because they don't make enough money. You cannot play this game. And like even now, I'm getting the comments, it's like, you know, you paying cash for cars. You know, if you would finance, people are drunk on credit. They cannot conceive paying cash for a car. They can't conceive it. It's like, hey, we need to finance this car and pay this little interest. And this is another thing. What you're gonna see is the credit repair industry is probably going to boom for the next five to seven years. Because if you don't have maximum credit, you cannot get that low interest rate. So even if you had the ability to play the game, you don't even have the credit score to play the game. And you got these folks out here because essentially um, the dude, he got a little, he got a little salty because people was like, not like me. It's like, you're going to buy a Ferrari or you're going to buy a supercar. You should pay cash. And Manny Korshpin, Manny Korshpin, he pays cash for his cars because Manny is a real baller. He's not a fake baller. The dude who uh, is financing his supercars, he can't pay cash for his cars. I know he can't. I know he can't. Because here's my argument on paying cash for cars. Last year, I dropped 200K on two cars, right? Pay cash. Within 32 days, I had that 200K back. I had it back. So, if you are buying these supercars, because essentially uh, there's a guy that's called Exotic Supercar Hacks, I think. He's full of crap. Here's the deal. I could go out and buy a supercar with my credit. You want to know why? 
because I have high income and I have tax forms to prove it. I could go out tomorrow and finance a Ferrari. I could do that. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm not trying to talk down to you, but most of you cannot finance a Ferrari even if you have an 850 credit score. Go ahead and Google it. Uh, VinWikis, if you want, because essentially the company is going to want to see that you've done that type of financing before. And even though I have not financed a car like that, I have the tax records to indicate I have the income where I can get away with that. So I can go to the bank, turn over my documents, and get that supercar financing. 90% of America cannot finance a supercar. That's why our exotic car hacks is full of it. They don't have the money. I mean, I did a video on Savage Finance. If I was financing my cars, it would have been $3,500 per month. You know why that's significant? Over half of America makes $33,000 or less. They don't even, like, Half of America doesn't make what it would cost for me to finance my cars. They don't even bring that home. They don't even bring that home. So when you got someone up here talking about exotic supercar, and also, uh, I'm looking at adding another Porsche to the fleet. Use like a, 10, a 2010 Porsche, which is an 11-year-old car. The one I'm thinking about, it's going for 40K. 40K for an 11 year old car. So when you start talking about a recent Porsche, a recent Ferrari, a 2015, 2016, most of America, you can't afford that car because you don't make enough money. And I'm like, I'm not being disrespectful or talking down. I'm telling you guys the truth. A lot of these YouTubers are full of crap. They're just doing stuff to get the views. Like, yeah, you know, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this. They're just doing it to get the views. They're not trying to help you. I am trying to help you by telling you the reality of what you got to do to get this money. Because I'm like, the whole financing argument uh, like I said, the dude who did the video, he cannot afford to pay cash for these cars. He can't do it. He's too leveraged. He could not do it. He may have a seven-figure seven asset net worth. He would have to sell something and raise the money to then pay cash for the car, which would reduce his net worth. He could do that. But he's not like me, where I have a device that is creating cash flow where I can pay cash for these cars and next month have that cash back. He ain't living like that. And that's where I want you guys to be. I want you guys to create a financial device where you can live the life that you want to live. Do what you want to do. Drive what you want to drive. Live where you want to live. I am not giving you this BS advice because essentially a lot of people in the comments and most of the people in the comments couldn't even finance a supercar. That was that was what was hilarious. That was was hilarious. I mean, it, it was hilarious because you see people in the comments and they're talking about this is what rich people do. No, it ain't. There is the asset based millionaire who is slim on cash. And then there is the cash millionaire. And they both live totally different lifestyles. Because the asset based millionaire he has a net worth one to three million dollars based on assets. He don't have enough cash. If he wanted to make some cash moves, he would have to sell something devaluing his net worth. So I, I see these arguments 
Financing cars, like, you, you, you want to finance a car for Turo, right? Let me give you a quick primer on Turo. First of all, you better research and make sure that car rents. All these cars do not rent and it's different per market. So you can go out and finance a car, and let's say you finance a car and you get yourself a $750 per month car note. And you throw the car on Turo. And the car only rents like two days. So you get 300 bucks from two day rental. You gotta come up with that other $450. See, this is the danger of financing. Like I said, if you make some mistakes with financing, it's gonna be very painful. I made a mistake buying this car cash. Let me explain to you what happened. Like Turo, you cannot put a car on Turo that has more than 130,000 miles. It can be like 120. Once you put it on the Turo platform, if it has like 120, and if it crosses 130 on the Turo platform, you're good to go. But if it has more, because one of the Range Rovers I bought has 147,000 miles. You can't put it on there. I tried to put it on higher car, had some problems. So, I am stuck until I get the title. And what I'm gonna do with the title is I'm just gonna trade it in on something else. So even though I made a mistake, I gotta wait a few weeks to get a title, then I'm bailing out of that. Now, you buy a car and you finance it, and let's say you decide to sell it. It ain't working out. Guess what? Because you financed it, the depreciation is huge the first year. So you're not gonna be able to sell it for what you bought it for. So you're gonna have to come up with some more cash. This is where the pain, like me, uh, the deal, I got a really good deal. Uh, I am I'm a little bit under blue book value. So I will be able to get out of this with no loss of money because I paid cash and I bought correctly. But all these folks telling you, Finance a car and put it on Turo. Tell them to show you some receipts. Tell them to show you some receipts. I guarantee you, they ain't gonna be look pretty. Cause you know, I, I have some people who want to uh, me to reach out and talk to some, some Instagram people. And like, I have no problem with this person. I'm not mentioning his name because I don't really know what he does. I can't say good or bad, so I'm not mentioning names, I'm not throwing any shade, but I'm gonna say this. I am a true business person. And what is one of my laws? Cameron's Law. At some point, all third-party platforms behave in their best interest. Turo. Turo has this little quirk. Turo now requires you to open up a Stripe account. Now Stripe sent me an email. I've had no transactions, but due to the high chargeback rate of your industry, we're gonna hold on to your money for two weeks before we pay you out. So payouts are gonna be every two weeks. Every two weeks. Let's see a Turo video on that. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna start doing higher car because I need to get some data points before I start talking about this stuff. Like higher car, the stuff moves pretty quick. Uh, I've got people renting three cars, um, moved really, really quick. So that information was true and accurate. But here's the thing with higher car. People are looking for cheap rates. So um, essentially what I'm going to do is once I get the titles, I'm gonna trade, I'm gonna sell these uh, ledge, these Acura TLs. I'm gonna sell them and take that money and buy cheaper cars. I already see, because like I said, I have made some mistakes. Because essentially, this is why I am doing a two-month experiment. And I already know, because I can sell those three cars and then turn around, take that money, and buy six cars. 
and rent them out for the same price. I'm gonna keep the Camry. Camry is a little expensive, but I'm gonna keep the Camry. And then I'm gonna put probably 10 cars on higher car, cheaper cars. And then also my whole thesis of, if you rent this car for a year, I gotta tighten that up a little bit. And as we go along, we get more data points and stuff. But already know, I'm selling them. But see, I pay cash. So I can sell them. And also, because the used car market is ridiculous right now, I can sell them for more than I paid for them. Take that money, roll it into six, possibly seven new cars, and then put them on hire car. And then what I'm probably going to do is trade, I'm gonna probably buy another Porsche because the Porsche went like that. It's a 2010 and it, I mean, Porsche has, they build a good product. They really do. Uh, Cause like, I don't like, like I would not buy a Land Rover for myself unless it was one of the newer ones like the Sport because I don't like the way that they drive. Like, you know, going straight line, they got a little power but going around curves and the vehicle's sitting up high. I mean, you can go off road in these things if you wanted to. Um, probably gonna trade those in on another Porsche because I'm figuring this stuff out as I go. And because I'm spending cash and I don't have any financing, like this one Range Rover, if it sits for a few weeks until I get the title, okay, no problem, no problem. Because I don't have the ticking time bomb of having to make a car payment, even though they're not repoing cars right now. So, you know, uh, many people don't, I'm going to say it like this. One of the reasons that financing is such a big topic on YouTube is none of these guys can pay cash for their stuff. They can't do it. They have no choice, you know. They do the videos, it's like, I'm gonna finance this vehicle versus putting cash. You can't pay cash. Stop lying, you can't do it. That cracks me up, I'm like, cause I was watching the video and I'm like, uh-huh, sure. You can't pay cash. Cause you don't make enough money cash flow. Your cash flow ain't high enough for you to have the cash to do this. And that, that cause that, that's how it's presented, like, you know, cause he got a little salty cause people, like people on the internet ain't stupid. I got a Porsche and a BMW in that garage. I paid cash for them. You all not? Cause I'm a baller. I'm a real baller. I'm not a fake ass baller. So I can pay cash, get more cash the next month, replace that and keep living. I'm a true baller. This is, this is true baller moves. This is how real ballers get down. They ain't out here financing cars. Now, the fake ballers are financing cars. And also, um, Mr. Organic, Tall Guy Reviews, they're financing cars, but for them, it makes sense since they have car channels and these cars are making money for them. These cars are making money for them. So that's a little different. That's a little different. So once I go ahead and figure out hire a car, figure out Turo, I'll probably finance some nice metal, but I'm gonna do it in a business name. And it's gonna be a business credit, because essentially, because I have cash to start this, I'm gonna develop cash flow. And then I could go out and finance cars in the business name. I'm probably gonna finance, I don't know. I may buy cash for the Jeep. I don't know. And essentially, until I get the title, I can't do anything with these cars. I can't trade them until I get the title. And state of Georgia, people not coming to work. So I'm probably not gonna have these titles until June. If I get them sooner, cool, I can make these moves sooner. But this is the, and this is just cash that was sitting in the bank. So it's not really impacting my life. 
you know, these are the tales of people who do things with cash. I have, I'm, I remember Rent-A-Crate uh, when I was working for them and they were telling me that it was started with organic funding, which means the owner had cash. Cash makes a big difference. Cash makes a big, big difference. Cash sets things up. And, you know, essentially, what I'm telling you, if you're in income, danger zone number one, this is the importance of starting a small business because it gives you more cash. So you can solve any of those problems, like if you finance cars, you can get out of the finance cars, you can get your long-term emergency fund, you can get your short-term emergency fund, you can get your family operating account, you can get all that stuff set up. And in three years, let, let me give it to you. If you make 25 and your wife makes 25 and together as a couple, y'all make 50, within three years, you can start a small business, keep your jobs and be making $50,000 a year from your small business. That ain't that difficult. It takes time. It takes a plan. It takes dedication. But this is something you can do. This is something the average person can do. And this gives you cash money where you'll be paying cash for your cars, where you'll have money in the bank. And, you know, now you've in, made you're, you're in a, into the six figure club. You make 50,000 from your jobs. You make 50,000 from your small business. Now you're in the position where you can actually think about one of you quitting your jobs. Now you're in that real position. I think that these people on YouTube who are talking about you could quit your job, um, they should be ashamed of themselves. They should be ashamed of themselves because they're leading people down a bad path. They're leading people to some erroneous conclusions. They're actually lying to people. And that, that's problematic, man. And that's just problematic. So what I want you guys to do, is, you know, for people who are not haters, like my punk ass neighbors, bitches, um, you know, there's some people who don't like the fact that I tell you guys the truth. I give it to you rugged and raw. And they don't like that because they want to believe in pretty lies because it makes them feel better. I want you guys to have good lives. I mean, this is one of the reasons my punk ass, bitch ass neighbors all up in my business. I'm living the life. It's like he by himself. How does he afford this 5,000 square foot house. He's by himself. How's he driving a brand new Porsche? How's he doing this? What is he doing? Instead of, you know, like, I don't even know what these people do. I know my neighbor over here is an attorney. I know what they do because I talk to them. But other than that, I don't know what these people do. I don't even know their names because I'm too busy running my business to be up in their business. I don't really give a damn about their business. It ain't doing nothing for me, but they all up in my business, watching the YouTube channel, making comments, talking all this crap because they live sad, deplorable, little bitchy punk ass lives. While I'm down here eating steak, enjoying life. Yesterday I had me steak and a loaded baked potato and a salad. I'm enjoying life. I'm having fun. And this is what happens when you could create options. And once again, like all these folks out here talking about, you know, uh, why rich people finance stuff. There's two type of rich people. There's the asset based millionaire rich people who finance stuff because they have to. It's not like it's an option. They have to finance. They can't pay cash. And there's ballers. Omni and the Hellcat, when he had the money, he was a baller. When he was buying these cars, he was paying cash. That's what folks who have money, that's what they do. There was a girl, 
is CNBC. Um, she she works on Fiverr. She made three hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars. She paid cash for a Jeep. She loans her mother cash to buy a house. See, this is what folks who have cash do. They pay cash for stuff. This is what they do. All these YouTube fake ass ballers. They're just telling you because if someone is driving a supercar and they're telling you about their financing, they're telling you a lot about their money. They're telling you, I don't have the cash money to buy this car. Nine times out of 10. I am not believing this whole notion of I'm going to take this money and invest it versus buying a car. Because, you know, the whole notion is uh, why pay cash for a depreciating asset? OK, homie, why are you financing a depreciating asset? You're losing more money than if you pay cash. So that, that's the whole little tongue in cheek thing. It's like it's a depreciating asset. So I'm going to finance it, take the depreciation and pay interest. Think, 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 people, think, because they're, they're just lying to you. Like this dude, he got a little salty because they came for him in the comments. You know, sometimes the Internet ain't stupid. If you were a real baller, you would have paid cash for that car. I'm just saying. And he didn't like that because he knows it's true. He knows it's true. He's not making enough money to pay cash for these cars. And I mean, that ain't a bad thing. I mean, he's in a position to afford the car. But instead of coming up with this, you know, because uh, he came up with a fictional scenario. If I had taken this money and put it like if not that I did this. And, you know, I would have made, you know, because essentially in the personal finance sector of YouTube, there's a lot of fiction. There's not a lot of practical reality. There's not a lot of people telling you the truth. There's a lot of people out here making up numbers and pulling them out their booties. Well, you know, you could supposedly take this money and put it in the market for 45 years and you will have this. Show me the real data on that. I did some research. If you had money in the market for the last 10 years, your return would have been 10%, 12%, right? But if you had money in the market for the last 30 years, your overall return would have been 6.8%, which means the market goes up and down. So if, yeah, you, you know, a lot of the people who've been in the market for the last 10 years, when we have a long dry spell and it's going to happen, they ain't going to know how to act. They're going to, their hair is going to be on fire. They're going to be jumping out of windows. Because they, this is why I'm starting this business. Right now, used car values are insane. Uh, dealers are having problems buying inventory. And this is the perfect time to get into the market because it's hard. If I got into the market like some of these two-year-old people who got in when it was easy, and now the market's shifted, they don't know how to act. They don't know how to run a business. They don't know how to market. They don't know how to advertise. They don't know how to do any of this stuff. Because at some point, all third party marketplaces behave in their best interest and they will act a certain way and they will treat you a certain way. So just take that for noise. Just take that because right now our society is devolving and we got a bunch of people out here who don't want to work. They don't want to work. They don't want to do what's required. They just want to chill. They want to Netflix and chill, hang out with sexy Slim Susan, hang out with Big Booty Betty, and just do their thing. They're not trying to build anything. And like half the country is in the danger zone. Well, more than half, like 70% of the country, 70, 70, 70, 70, 75 percent of the country is in the danger zone. And when these things shift, as right now, with this worker shortage, what businesses are going to do is figure out how to bring automation in, and these jobs are going to disappear. They're just going to disappear. 
You don't want to go to this low wage, uh, high stress job? Cool. We're going to figure out some automation for you and the job's going to disappear and you ain't going to have no job. It's coming. It's coming. So that's all I got for you guys today. If you want to get in the art of holding, the links below and I will see you guys there.